Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lunar Module Operation Series. This is the second lesson and it's going to be a very short one and uh, we'll mainly focus on how you can get into the Lunar Module from the Command Module. So I've loaded up the Fallen Dark uh, lesson uh, or mission from uh, the Apollo menu and as you can see we're now in a docked uh, configuration with the Lunar Module. Uh, this is uh, of course a requirement to get into the Lunar Module. Uh, the way you get into the Lunar Module is that there's a tunnel that goes from uh, the front of the Command Module through the roof and uh, into the Command Module itself, uh, the Lunar Module itself. Uh, there's two hatches that blocks this entrance. Uh, one is inside of the uh, Lunar module, and then there's one inside of the command module. And uh, when you want to perform an undocking, it's very, very important to remember to close these hatches, uh, or else you're going to be in uh, big trouble. So let's go into the command module again. As you can see, there's uh, a few things that we need to uh, account for when we want to enter the lunar module. The first one is to turn on the tunnel lights. This is just to get some visibility down in the tunnel. And as you can see, the tunnel is located just below uh, the main display console panel number two, and uh, consists of the hatch. Uh, the hatch has some controls on it, as well as a control panel used to uh, for example, pressurize the tunnel. There's no oxygen inside of the tunnel right now or inside of the lunar module. So we need to uh, vent oxygen into this tunnel first. This is something that usually took quite a long time uh, in real life. But for now, I've shortened it down just to make this video a little bit uh, shorter and also for you as players. But on the realism settings, you will eventually be able to uh, select an option that will uh, set this to the speed that actually happened in real life. This could take hours, I think. So to uh, vent the tunnel, you use a couple of tools, uh, or either one of these couple of tools. Uh, you have the controls here, which allows you to uh, vent the tunnel or pressurize the lunar module, for example, like this, and uh, it will start pressurizing. Uh, another method is to just open uh, this valve. Usually you turn this around, but in re-enter you can just set it directly to close or open and the venting will start. As you can see, the needle now goes down and this is showing the differential pressure inside of, uh, or the differential pressure between the lunar module and the command module. And once this is at zero, it will stabilize and uh, the venting is complete. This means that you will be able to open the hatch. And uh, opening or closing the hatches is very simple. You can use the C menu or the tools menu to do this and then just uh, click open hatch and the hatch opens and you can see directly into the lunar module. The, du the lunar module is in a complete cold and dark state right now. Uh, as you can see, there's some lights down there right now. This is because we opened the hatch and with the hatch open, uh, there is a relay that automatically, automatically turns on the lights inside of the lunar module. It doesn't have a lot of power, but there's uh, the low voltage taps of uh, battery 1 and battery 4 that's connected and powering all of the systems uh, in the lunar module right now. But that's the only power source it actually has uh, connected to right now uh, when you first enter this. Now that the tunnel is open, we can enter the lunar module. And right now you do this uh, by using F4, uh, unless you rebind it, or you can select uh, switch to lunar module. You can see that the hatch is also open on the inside here. And uh, by closing this hatch, you can see that the lights are now turned off. There's only some things on. You can use the flashlights to look around and uh, uh, see how to see the components if you need to. However, we're just gonna open the hatch again. Another important thing to know is that if you open the hatch from either side, 
it will close it on both sides. For example, if we close this now and we switch back into the command module, you can see that it's closed on this side too. And if I open here, you can see that this one also opens. This is just to make it a little bit simpler for you so you don't need to go and, and open both uh, all the time and, and so on. As you can see, uh, we have a little bit of power and uh, there's a lot of systems that's uh, not yet active. So just to get you started with that, uh, I wanna just show you the mission pad. So the mission pad comes with a set of checklists used for the Luna module. So if you select uh, the Luna module uh, tab of the checklist, you can see that there's a lot of things here. For example, you have the digital autopilot setup that allows you to understand what you need to insert into the computer like we did in uh, lesson one and what each of these digits actually mean. Uh, but you also have the subsystems activation uh, checklist. It's four parts uh, because it's very, very long. Uh, that allows you to get started with setting up everything so for example if you go into subsystem activation one you can see that there's a lot of steps involved in that one part and uh, there's helpers inside of this checklist that's, that allows you to run through a few uh, of the mandatory uh, checks here for example uh, let's go and verify that all of the circuit breakers on panel 11 is set into their initial uh, uh, position this is just a verification and it's usually always correct uh, because once you get into the Luna module this has already been set up by the backup crew and the same goes for panel 16 except for one fuse that will eliminate and you just need to close this as an example Another thing that you can do in checklists is to request things. Some checklists, for example, step three, uh, is that you need to request the command module pilot. That's the person who are sitting inside of the command module once the Luna module undocks and does the Luna landing. There's three persons on an Apollo mission and uh, all of them are sitting inside of the command module on the journey towards the moon. But once you uh, perform the lunar la landing, two of these persons go into the lunar module, and this is the commander and the lunar module pilot. The command module pilot are, uh, is left alone in the command module and performs a lot of important tasks needed to be done there, and also rendezvousing once the lunar module gets back up from the lunar surface. So step number three is something that you could do yourself manually by jumping into the Luna module, uh, no, the command module. And uh, it's very simple, it needs to be docked. And you just set this switch to LM power and then set this to CSM. Now the uh, uh, Luna module is powered by the command module. If I set this to off and ask the uh, command module pilot to set this, I can say request and it will automatically be set. And this is of course something that you want to do when you're inside of the Luna module, so you don't need to go back into the command module and, and perform things. So the activation checklists go through all, everything that you need to get up and running and uh, uh, are the systems that we'll be diving deeper into on, uh, in the next lessons. So that's it for now. I hope that this was valuable for you and uh, that I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll be focusing on the electrical power system. Thank you for watching and see you soon.